Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is Abdulaziz Khan, and uh, today I am with you with a video. It should be a bit longer video, uh, yeah, and it's uh, you can say the start of uh, microwave transmission planning. As I was uh, writing in my video comments and on my other social media channels, that I will soon, very soon, I will start some. Uh, basic some uh, trainings on how to do uh, planning so i will give you some um, detail on the path loss tool as well and uh, separately i will tell you like in this video i will tell you the background so that if you are doing some planning uh, at least you know because what i have seen from my experience is that some people they are Mashallah, they are good planners, but uh, they have just learned planning uh, without any theoretical knowledge. So theoretical knowledge is also something which is very important. So we will learn uh, the basics of microwave propagation. And uh, I will show you uh, as per requirement that how this should be used while you are planning actual link in path loss so i will try to make a correlation as well wherever required and if you have any question if you still don't understand anything just write to me and uh, i will reply and it's better that you make a comment on my video so that uh, i can check it and then i can reply accordingly so let's move uh, basically the objective of link planning what why we do a link planning, I mean, we can very easily put, we can do a line of sight survey and we can put two links and we are almost sure that the links should work. But uh, the main objective of link planning is to accurately predict the link outage time. Because if, for example, I put a link, just arbitrary, I mean, I put a link and it start working. So how can I tell that in which conditions this link should be kept working? I mean, for example, if there is rain, how much rain it will sustain if the weather is, the terrain is not good. I mean, the terrain is, for example, it's a hilly area or it's a coastal area, how it the link should be affected. So that is why we do a link planning first so that we know that, okay, this link should work in this way on based on these these things that we have uh, taken care of in our planning of the link so majority of the link outages they occur because of atmospheric effects atmospheric effects is like rain fading and multipath and these kind of things so that is why understanding of this effect is very very necessary because if you don't understand that like I have seen a lot of people, they just use planning tool just for putting frequencies and checking, you can say very minimal kind of thing that okay, receive level is fine. The problem is that you can have a very fine receive level without even doing planning. You give a link, you tell a link to a rigger that I want to install this much link, the rigger based on his own experience, he can tell you that okay, you put it in this frequency, this size of antenna, and he will ensure you a very good receive level. So if we can do it in a very simple way, I mean, just by asking uh, a rigger or uh, some technical person, then why do we go in this much of detail of a planning of a link and doing link budgets and these kind of things? So because uh, that there are a lot of other things which are very necessary, to make a link work in almost all atmospheric conditions. We can plan a link which can work and which can give us 100% availability in all weathers, in all circumstances, but that link should be very carefully planned. So just to get back that, uh, as we know that majority of the link outages, they are mainly due to atmospheric effects. So atmospheric effects should be very well known.
why to accurately predict the outage period that the rent will experience and we need to ensure that the plan length it will meet the required performance and quality objective this last para is very important in two ways number one is that if you are planning a link you should know that how you can improve the performance and how you can achieve the required quality objective this is one thing but the other thing which is i will say that it is more important than this is that you should know the performance criteria you should know the quality objective that what are those because again i will i have seen a lot of people they they don't know very well that for example what quality or itu recommendation this 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 and itu or recommendation this is this, this they know the numbers but they don't know that what this recommendation what it tells i mean for example if i am planning a link for some quality objective then what does that objective in itself means and then i can assure that how i can reach to the objective so i will have to know both of the things because for microwave uh, because of the re lower dependency you don't have a lot of uh, high capacity data on the, these links so some of these quality objective they are very you can say that they are not very strict they are they give you a lot of question i mean for example you can plan a link based on some itu objective but that objective only requires a triple 9 99.9% of availability so just putting a name of objective does not mean that it will serve your purpose you should know that okay this objective means what and how i can achieve that objective so let's go back in the theory uh, rf wave have some types uh, some of them are called ground waves because as per the name these waves they travel uh, with the ground they travel uh, with uh, they travel like they are hugging the ground i mean they are always following the uh, curvature of the earth so that's why ground waves they can go very far uh, the short wave radio that uh, you can for example if you have heard the name of ham radio the or the amateur radio you can build a radio at your home and that radio can be easily heard in for example in uk or you maybe in usa as well in usa there is a big uh see in between but it can be very easily heard in uk this is called amateur radio this amateur radio uses ground waves and it can travel very far because it goes with the curvature then there are sky waves the sky waves travel towards the sky and uh, then they are reflected from the ionosphere i will show you some detail of these waves so sky waves are basically which you use generally with uh, we can say that they these are the wave that we use with vsat type of uh, network because they can penetrate through the sky and they can go uh, very far then the wave that we are usually concerned with they are called space wave or they are you can say the normal waves which are used for normal communication uh point to point communication and for wireless mobile networks so these waves they propagate in the normal atmosphere just the atmosphere that we also live in atmosphere which is just above the ground not very far away and these waves usually travel in straight lines so our point to point microwave system it relies on these space waves this is a small uh, picture to show you all the kind of waves so for example this is earth we know that earth is is a curve earth is not straight it's a curvature so we have for example we have two towers the ground wave the low frequency or medium frequency waves they can travel with with the ground they can travel very near to the ground that they can travel with the curvature so they can go very fast far now for example if we have two antennas here 
so this area where these two antennas are lying this is the area which we are calling as the normal space in specific geographical terms this area is called troposphere the area just above the earth ground and approximately 10 20 km above the ground this area is called trop troposphere so your microwave they work uh, within this area because you, we know that 10 km is is a much higher distance we cannot go i mean even the air airplanes they cannot fly very easily above this line so 10 km is uh, very high so we generally this is the area where we have some atmosphere available uh, atmosphere of the ground so um, the waves they experience all the atmospheric problems like uh, while what we know from uh, normal uh, wave propagation that you know that wave they go through diffraction and reflection and refraction so whatever a normal wave goes through the same thing this microwave also the radio wave it also goes through all those things so this straight line it's a non-refracted wave for which k is equal to one uh, i hope some of you understand this k is equal to one we will discuss this further in uh, some uh, next video i will give you good detail of what is this so here we can see that Generally, if there is two microwaves, they are not only getting only one wave, they are getting at least two, three waves. For example, they are getting one direct wave, not refracted from anything. Then they may be getting one more wave. It is refracted from the troposphere because you know the wave, uh, the density of uh, the atmosphere it's not constant it's it's uh, different in different layers even if you talk within meters or within the uh, uh, maybe two three meters the density may change significantly so that is why we have some anomalies in the microwave transmission like for example in some areas we have ducting effects and in some area we have some other effects it because of that this atmosphere is not homogeneous it's not perfect homogeneous it it has layers and layers of different refractive index again as i told you i will go in very much detail i will make inshallah many more slides many more uh, videos and i will tell you uh, if you keep following me i will tell you in very very much detail about all of these things but just for now we can see that if I send a signal from here, this signal can be received here with three different type of, uh, you cannot get a, at least only one signal, you can get maybe three type of signals. One is a direct signal, non-refracted. One you may receive or you may not receive a refracted wave. And then you can have a reflected wave, which is reflected from the ground or any other object like uh, but that object should also be on ground i mean like for example from some uh, building or from some hill or from some uh, some other thing but any reflective thing for example if there is a water body here then the water body will give you very enormous kind of reflection it will be like a mirror so we can have here we can receive three type of signals here so this receiver should be planned in such a way that we get the maximum power of the required signal only maximum power is uh, not required this also i will tell you that what do i mean by this that uh, only high power is not required so let's go back to this uh, picture so we have troposphere and we have a stratosphere Stratosphere is 10 to 70 km and then we have ionosphere. Ionosphere is you can say that after ionosphere then we go in the free space. Ionosphere is from 70 to almost 1000 km. 
uh, because satellite is also a part of uh, transmission. So I will give you a very small introduction here of satellite as well, because satellite also work on the same wave. Like for example, we have six and seven or 10, 11 gigahertz channels for satellite and the same channel we may use for this microwave point-to-point -point communication as well. So because these channels are same, so that is why we should know something about satellite as well. So satellite, there are generally two types of satellite. We can have three as well. Uh, Geo satellite, Geo are the satellite which are almost 35,800 kilometers above the ground. They are almost in space and they are geosynchronous because of the distance they have with Earth. So they travel with the speed uh, of the rotation that the Earth rotates. So they are, uh, if a satellite is on some place uh, on the sky, then his uh, position with respect to the Earth will not change. And if, he is, if their satellite is in, is in the geostationary orbit. So geostationary is good in a way that it is always there, I mean. So, one another which is used a lot for uh, voice calling, it's called low earth orbit satellites. These satellites are around 800 kilometer distance, so they are traveling very fast and they are not visible for very long. They will come and they will go. I mean, they will be like, uh, passing by the Earth like uh, we have other orbits, uh, other things passing in the other orbits. So they are not stationary. They are always uh, changing their positions. And generally, for example, if you find some satellite somewhere, uh, within maybe two, three hours, he will rotate the whole Earth and he will be again, you will find it again on the same place. So low earth orbit satellites are not stationary. That is why, for example, if you want to cover the earth through geostationary satellites, you only need three satellites and you can cover the whole earth. But in case of low earth orbit, you need 60, 70 satellites to cover the whole earth. Uh, one of the most uh, known uh, satellite phone system, which is called Iridium. Iridium has, I think, more than 60 satellites to cover the whole Earth. So this satellite is portion is uh, not, you can say, the main part of our discussion, but just to give you some idea that satellite is also, uh, it uses the transmission frequencies and we use it a lot. So uh, one thing in this video that I have added, uh, just to keep uh, the people engaged, I have put some quizzes uh, in between. So for example, here I have put three questions about satellites. That one question is that how much delay will be incorporated if we are using geosatellites. So here I want to see that how many people they understand this. We know here that the distance of geosatellite is 35,800 kilometers. So if you are using geosatellite, then how much delay should be incorporated? So you can answer me in the comments and uh, with your email, and I will respond to on your email and tell you that if your answer was right or wrong. So another question is that what are the advantages of low earth orbit satellite over geo stationary satellites. So like we see the here, these are two satellites, one is very near, one is very far. But this one don't remain on this, on its place, it uh, travels very fast. So it, it cannot be used as a, uh, it cannot always be visible to you. I mean, it will come and it will go. So if it is not, visible all the time, then what is the benefit that we are getting from this satellite? What are the advantages of this satellite? And one small question that, for example, if you all are using GPS receivers, what do you think? I mean, GPS receivers, they should be using low Earth orbit satellite or geostationary satellite. So these are some small questions just to keep you busy and engaged 
so that when you are uh, going through this video, you are uh, listening. I will have uh, other quizzes as well. I mean, I will, whenever I will give you some idea, then I will ask some questions so that I can check that whether you are uh, uh, reading it in uh, or listening it in, uh, and you are getting something out of it or you are just uh, passing the slides. So let's go back to our main topic, microwave propagation. So microwave propagation, to study it, uh, we need to know the effects on the receive signal level at the receiver. Because this is, you can say, the most important thing. For example, whatever I transmit is very important, but for me, what I receive is more important because even if I transmit anything and if I not able to receive it then all the requirement is uh, all this propagation is of no use i mean because if i'm not transmitting anything then i don't care that if i receive something or not because i'm not transmitting but if i'm transmitting anything then if it is received in the best way or not this is something which is important for us so that is why we will uh, be interested more in the receiver side as well. So <clears throat> the propagation mechanism uh, that we need to understand is that uh, microwave propagation is uh, assumed to be a similar propagation which is being done in the free space. Even though we don't have a free space here, but the basic formula is the same formula which is used for the waves in free space because we have we know that what is the refractive index of our medium so that is why we always use or we always study uh, the things in free space and then we correlate i hope most of you uh, who has uh, done engineering or who have uh, studied physics they should correlate some of uh, things that they studied in physics in in light propagation these are things these things are almost similar but i I've, i will be talking here so to study the main concept of microwave we should correlate it with the free space propagation and then we will study the propagation under the influence of atmosphere and this is also almost the same way that light is influenced because you know the microwave and the light uh, they are same in a way that both of them are waves and the waves they experience uh, the things in exactly the same way so because microwave is also a wave and light is also a wave so whatever we have studied for light we can easily implement here so that is how the scientists they came to know that uh, this propagation it is almost same uh, exactly same as light so free space propagation refers to the propagation of electromagnetic wave in a homogeneous ideal dielectric medium which may be considered to be infinite in all directions this is you can say a bit of uh, theory that what is the free space propagation? And when we talk about free space, we talk about a homogeneous uh, medium. We don't uh, take the differences or the, the, the difference in the, or the changes in atmosphere. We assume that everything remains the same. So the wave, it experiences a uniform kind of, uh, uh, uniform kind of, uh, um, the wave propagation is in a, in a uniform medium, so it, it do, do not change a lot. I mean, the things that we make, they remain the same. And this free space region is almost six kilometers high at the poles and about 80 kilometers high at the equator, and it is called troposphere. So, which we also discussed here, that there's a troposphere, which is on an average it's almost 10 kilometer i mean 6 kilometer on the pole and 18 kilometers on the equator 
Now, hope, I hope most of you have gone or have seen this uh, very known equation. This is called the free space loss. This name uh, goes with free space. This is the loss. This is the, you can say that this is the maximum loss or this is the average loss we can say because we are talking right now about free space or a homogeneous space where there are no variations in the, in the environment. So this loss is is constant uh, in a way that if you if you send a, f a known frequency, for example, the frequency is in gigahertz. For example, you are sending 18 gigahertz, and your distance between the antennas is, for example, 10 kilometer or whatever. So you whatever you send and whatever you receive, you will always have a free space loss which should be constant. So. Again, a small quiz because this thing is a bit tricky as well. I mean, I hope uh, most of you have studied this, but if you have not studied, maybe you'll have to brush up your uh, physics books. So this equation, this equation shows it has a frequency component and it is very simple. You can understand from a simple math that if this frequency will increase, this loss will increase and same goes with the distance as well but with distance we understand that because if the distance increases we know that the wave with the whenever they are sent with the with the distance the wave power is uh, decreased every wave i mean you have been working in in the field you should know that the wave power it is reduced even in the copper wire or in fiber optic cable or whatever any media you have this is a simple characteristic that because of the uh, medium, the power of the wave, it decreases with distance. But here we know very peculiar thing that even with the frequency, I mean, for example, you are sending 18 gigahertz, your free space loss should be something else. And if you are sending 36 gigahertz, then your free space loss should increase because this number is uh, in uh, because of the position of this number, I mean, any increase in this number will increase this value. So the question is very simple: that why, why that if I send a higher frequency, then my free space loss increases? Why it's frequency dependent? And then a very simple question: that if we double the frequency. So the signal level should increase or decrease at the receiving antenna and whatever it will happen, it will be with how much dB. For example, if I double the frequency, how much dB of difference I will uh, get and this difference should be a increase or a decrease in, in the signal level. So these two questions you can reply me on in comments and put your email address and then I will tell you that if you have, uh, if you are correct or not. In this first video, I will go a bit on uh, the mathematics because I feel that a lot of people, they don't know, I mean, so, because if you are doing, if you are working in uh, transmission planning, you should have some of the idea because just Working without any idea is not good. You should have some idea because if you are working anywhere, if you don't have a tool, you should have enough knowledge that if you are giving some numbers, you can calculate on your own as well. I mean, you, you should not be fully dependent. So how this free space loss equation is calculated? So for example, if we have a transmitter which is transmitting a power, PT, power transmitted. And uh, this is an isotropic antenna. This is an ideal antenna which can transmit equally in all directions. And you are sitting at a distance D, you are sitting on a distance D. So the radiated power, we know that if when isotropic antenna, it radiates, it's an ideal antenna. And if we are sitting in an ideal environment, we are sitting in free space. 
so the radiation should be equally distributed in all directions in, in the whole area so we know that the area of a sphere is 4 pi d square so the power flux density i mean how much power is distributed in any known area should be power transmitted divided by the area of the sphere or 4 pi d square so s should be power transmitted divided by 4 pi d square and we know that the receive power because if we we have a receive power if we are now we go towards the receiver side i mean so on the receiver side we should know that how much area we are using to receive you know the antenna it has an area parabolic area of the antenna so the receive area or the area in which we are uh, checking that how much power is received received power should be the, the area of the receiver into the power flux density this is very simple uh, equation i hope uh, the people who have uh, read some physics they should understand very easily that uh, that if you have a power flux density then if you in multiply the density with any specific area then you can get the power within that small area so this uh, isotropic receiving antenna we know that the area of this receiver is lambda squared divided by 4 pi now i will not go in in the detail here because if i start going in uh, detail of everything then this should become a physics class but you can if anyone is uh, interested then we can discuss it further but just assume that the area is square of the wavelength of the frequency being received divided by 4 pi now if we use these all these uh, these 1 2 and 3 equations then we can because we know that the loss loss is power transmit divided by power received how much we transmit and then how much we receive the ratio of these two things is the loss of power so <coughs> now here we because we know that we will be working with the frequency not with the wavelength because you know all of us we are used to work in frequency like 18 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz and 10 gigahertz we don't talk in wavelength that uh, the signal is how much millimeter or micrometer or nanometer generally we are below millimeters between millimeters to centimeters but uh, we don't use that centimeter millimeters and we know that lambda is equal to c over f so we should uh, solve these equations and we put the value of lambda so we came to know that uh, the power loss loss of power it comes out to be 4 pi oblique c square f square d square so this is the free space loss that we get through these equations so as i told that i will not go in much detail but again i have a small quiz that previously we told you here we gave you this free space loss equation that this is the free space loss which is very known equation if you have distance in kilometer and frequency in gigahertz and this is the free space loss if you remember this number you can always calculate an estimated free space loss between any two points but here from the formula we found this equation which does not really look like this equation so this last quiz or this quiz of uh, that you are going through right now 
I have a very simple uh, question that are these two equations equal or not? And if you say these are equal, then how? How they are equal? I mean. So uh, let me finish this. And uh, I have provided you three quizzes uh, to keep you engaged with this uh, presentation. So I hope I will have some comments. Uh, I believe a lot of people who are uh, checking my videos, they must be going through the videos and uh, that is how you can learn. So very soon I will be putting a new video where I will go in uh, more detail of the things that I feel that people should really know because uh, what I feel is a lot of people they don't have a very good knowledge of multipath and refraction and reflection how to avoid reflections and for example if we have a link in the area where we have ducting or other anomalies then how we can so I will try to give you uh, both flavors. I will use path loss as well. I will give you some directions from path loss and I will give you the background, the, the main knowledge that from where you can know that, okay, if something is happening like this, then what is the reason? So I hope you will like this uh, video uh, please spread the word because still I'm uh, I don't have a lot of uh, followers uh, I need uh, more followers so that uh, more people can learn so let's meet in uh, my next video inshallah assalamu alaikum